Vision is a force within us based in the principles by which we know we must guide our lives. Our vision rises up from the values we hold dear. It's the calling which we cannot ignore. It is the most powerful, motivating, moral force within us, writes Reverend Suzelle Lynch. Now, as many of you know in your work and in your personal lives, it's not a bad idea at the beginning of a new year to clarify your vision. Be intentional about where you will focus your energies and about what you want in your life. What calling should you not ignore in your lives going forward? Having a vision of where you want your life to head isn't only inspiring, but it offers clear guideposts and a values compass by which to proceed. So as we get underway with this new fellowship year, I wanted to share the callings which the board and I feel we cannot ignore. The callings which infuse our vision and direction for CVUUF this coming year. Nora Rasman from the UUA's Side with Love program asks us as a movement, who do we want to become? What are we willing to do? And how do we answer that question as individuals and a body of faith? So who do we want to become, my friends? I invite you to explore that question for yourselves as individuals. But today, I want to focus on who we want to become as a community, based on what we've heard from many of you. If we truly want to live into our mission of nurturing spiritually courageous people who transform the world through justice and compassion, then what should our priorities be? What does our mission call us forth to do this year? Now, I particularly want to lift up four powerful words in our mission statement. Nurture, transform, justice, and compassion. These are the words that guide your board and me in our discernment of our vision. How can we continue to grow in our capacity to nurture our families and youth? How can we continue to transform our thinking within and beyond these walls? And how can we continue to offer our life-saving message and community to more people searching for hope and sustenance in these troubling times? How can we continue to be a beacon shining brightly with integrity, justice, and compassion, and a well from which to draw healing, restorative waters? Now, last year, we successfully took a giant step towards financial sustainability. And I'm so proud of all of us making that happen. We honed and deepened our powerful social justice programs. And we also put a lot of energy into creating engaging, dynamic, and musically excellent worship. And of course, much of last year's work continues. But I want to celebrate how much of what we envisioned last year we actually accomplished, right? Can I hear a yay or something for that? <laughs> Thank you. So this year, our vision is going to focus on three primary aspects. Nurture, transform, and share. Nurture. Nurturing will focus on our children, youth, and families. And we'll do this by placing our attention on developing the most thoughtful, nourishing, and inspiring religious education program we possibly can. Transform. Transformation work will center on growing our capacity to be champions of multiculturalism and inclusivity during a time that seeks to divide us more and more. And share. share. Sharing focuses on spreading our message. Sharing means we communicate more effectively what we do within and beyond this well-hidden songbird business park. We focus on sharing our stories so that more people may join us at our community well of inclusivity, 
connection, inspiration, and hope. So let me unpack all of these a little bit more. As many of you know, and especially those of you who attend our first services, we're blessed by many wonderful families and children of all ages in this congregation. And it is my greatest joy to watch our children in services each week and to see them grow in their understanding of life. Raising children who are guided by UU values and the desire to help others is one of the biggest gifts we could offer an intolerant world. We hope to nurture children who feel loved and held by community. Children who are not afraid to question. Children who care about each other and about something greater, something bigger than themselves. Last night, for those of you that don't know, we held a family round table. Sam, our Director of Religious Education, and I shared with parents our vision for the RE program while listening to their hopes for their kids and how this community might nurture their growth. We want to better support our families in being able to bring Unitarian Universalism home, to have a full week faith, not just on Sundays, a faith in which they have resources that help reinforce our Unitarian Universalist values around the dinner table, in play, in stories and at bedtime. One in which our children can clearly articulate what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist and how they live their faith. And we want our children to be more visible, a more engaged part of our community so all generations can learn from each other and that our children are deeply connected to all aspects of our community. Now, our middle schoolers are going to be spending the year on a new curriculum from our Soul Matters Collective called Crossing Paths, or paths in translation, if you'd like. <laughs> Soul Matters is a consortium of hundreds of UU congregations around the country who are collectively studying common themes, like the theme vision this month, and theological concepts. Now, other religions have a lectionary and a clear structure to their year's liturgy, and as you use, we're blessed to have almost limitless choice in our liturgy, drawing from all of the world's major religions, philosophies, and the arts. But Soul Matters offers us some structure and an opportunity to share resources. Their new middle school curriculum, Crossing Paths, which our middle schoolers will undertake, is an embodied experiential curriculum. It builds on the idea of the UUA's neighboring faiths program, and introduces middle schoolers to 10 different religions throughout the year, while grounding them in Unitarian Universalism. Meanwhile, our high schoolers will be in the YRUU program, hopefully answering the classically implied question of, why are you you? Or young religious Unitarian Universalists. They'll be gathering every week, learning spiritual practices that will help center them and ground them in our faith. And they will, of course, discuss issues that are relevant and specific to teenagers while supporting each other and becoming who they want to be. And we're also hoping to start a couple of different youth groups. One, a monthly youth group focused on social activities, and the other, a youth group providing a home for our LGBTQ population. We want CVUUF to be known in the area as a safe place for youth to come as they navigate the complex waters of discovering who they are and what it means being a teen at this time. Meanwhile, our elementary school program will be rich in an experiential exploration of our monthly themes, and our youngest ones will be encouraged to play in our child space. And all the while, all ages will focus on choosing justice projects that will inspire them to care for the world beyond our walls. For all ages, our religious education program aims to be vibrant, engaging, with relevant pedagogy and UU faith formation. And we also want to hold more regular family check-ins. We want to create events at which our families can form and deepen bonds and better support one another. And we're offering childcare at our Wellspring Wednesday evenings now. Can I hear some celebration of that? It means that parents can now join the choir. The car is happy about it. 
Parents can now join in the choir, or they can attend our meditation group, or even go on a date night. The car is extremely happy. We want families to know that we are here for them and that they matter. This community cares and nourishes parents and hopefully makes parenting easier, more fun and more rewarding. But wait, did you think we'd forgotten the grown-ups? Okay, good, of course not. I'll be offering a monthly class on cultivating joy and resilience in challenging times beginning in October. And there's also our much-loved Chalice Circle program, which kicks off then. And if you don't already know, these circles allow you to connect deeply with a smaller group of people to explore your lives as they relate to our theological themes. If you've never been in one before, I encourage you to try this out. And the car clearly agrees with that, too. Meanwhile, in everything we do, we'll continue exploring what it really means to honor the inherent worth and dignity of all beings, as our first principle calls us to do. How can we be welcoming and inclusive to all? To that end, a group of us will be studying a curriculum at a Meadville Lombard Theological School entitled Beloved Conversations. This anti-racism program transforms communities to be able to have courageous and sensitive conversations. It will explore how to live and act in a spirit of reconciliation that brings growth and spiritual healing both to the congregation and beyond our walls. We'll be undertaking beloved conversations next February, beginning next February, with five other UU congregations on the Central Coast. And the program is nearly full, so please do let me know immediately if you feel called to participate, send me an email or talk to me at the end of the service. Additionally, the board and leadership will be undertaking some intercultural competency programs. We'll be doing a workshop unpacking this with the UUA regional staff in March next year. And the whole idea is to increase our sensitivity to and understanding of issues around racism and multiculturalism. The intent, the intent is to serve our community with hearts that are more open and minds that are more informed. But all of this has value, my friends, only in as far as we're able to touch and transform as many lives as possible. Unfortunately, the Conejo Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship continues to be one of the best kept secrets of the Conejo Valley. Yeah. People don't know who we are. They don't know where we are or what we are or what our name even means. People who might be interested, who would love the support of our community, don't know that we're here for them. And we've had many new members recently tell us they wish they'd known long ago that this place existed. And apparently, we're still not easy to find. So we're working on that. And I'm open to our newcomers here today to share with me after the service, how did you find us? And what brought you here so that we can better understand how to reach our message beyond this business park? So about six months ago now, we formed our marketing PR team. And we called ourselves Share, because that's our intent, to share. We've been working on what it will take for our presence to be more noticeable in the Conejo Valley and beyond. We want to offer more people the inspiration, the vision and community that we share. Don't forget, my friends, this faith, and I, and I almost tear up when I think about this, but this faith has literally saved many people's lives, and I know those people. And we don't know who's out there who needs this sane, healing, hope-filled, welcoming faith during these difficult times. So the SHARE team has been working to target and expand our social media efforts. And our video and social media presence is growing weekly. Please check out our Facebook page where we're posting daily uh, memes and inspirational quotes and things you can take home. And our philosophy in SHARE is based around an attraction principle. What would make people be excited, inspired, and attracted to us when they hear our name and what we do? 
How can we make our message clearer and more compelling? How can we better awaken curiosity and interest in new people and being a compelling, authentic reflection of who we are? SHARE and the board have been examining these questions in depth. And the SHARE team is going to share more about their exciting and innovative ideas over the next few weeks in services. So please do come and stay tuned. Our fellowship is too great a gift at this time in history to keep it hidden. This is a secret we must no longer keep secret. Are you with me? And as part of being more effective at sharing our gifts, we'll also be looking at our visitor and membership processes. Over the year, the community life leaders and I will be working to examine and revitalize our membership path to be as engaging, inspiring, and inclusive as possible. We want everyone who comes here to feel welcome and that they can embark on a journey of shared life and meaning with us. We want everyone to know this is a place where they can be fully themselves. They can ask spiritual questions that they're longing to find an answer for. They can form lifelong connections. And they can come together to serve the greater good. A couple of days ago, I got an email from Barack Obama. Not a personal one. <laughs> but it said that history has proven that virtue alone is not enough. A better vision will only prevail if we work tirelessly on behalf of that vision. So I invite us to join together to work tirelessly for a vision of a better, kinder, more compassionate and just world, a world that educates our children with thoughtfulness and works for the inclusion and worth of all. Are you with me? Yeah. Nurture, transform and Will you join us? Can we hear a little bit more resonance in that? Will you join us? Thank you. My friends, may we move together boldly, boldly, hand in hand into this vision of our future together. May our hearts be open to all we're called to love in this world. And may our minds be equally unprejudiced, curious, and inquiring. And may the vision that calls us forth, always be guided by our Unitarian Universalist principles and values, now and forevermore. May it be so. Amen. And now we move into celebrating our community and our coming together for our new church year. As we rejoice in this ingathering and simultaneously let go of the old to summon our new vision, I invite you to come forward in a moment for a ritual cleansing. Now, hand-washing rituals are part of many spiritual traditions of Judaism, Shintoism, paganism, and others. Some of us come here today feeling tired, overwhelmed, or sick. Others may be worried, stressed about the state of our nation and world, or unhappy. Whatever weighs on your hearts, my friends, we will use this moment to cleanse ourselves from anything we want to leave behind to make room for a new vision. I invite you to let go of pain and suffering, of sorrows and struggles, of negativity and expectations that do not serve the greater good. Allow this hand washing to cleanse you of whatever does not contribute to your joy your vision, and the greater good. Allow the water to renew and refresh your spirit so that together we may invite a radiant new vision for ourselves and for this community. Now, there are three stations, one here, one there, and one over there. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to form three lines, and I invite you to come up from the outside, and that line will feed both that one and this one. Both lines can feed both of these so that we can evenly divide our stations. As you come up, take the jug and making eye contact with the person already there, pour a little water over their hands. And please say the following words to the person whose hands you are washing. May this water 
clarify your vision. May this water clarify your vision. And in case you're worried about remembering those words, they're on a piece of paper at each station. So that'll be your, your clue. Then kindly take their place and hold your own hands above the bowl and turn to the person after you and let them pour a little water over your hands. You can touch the water to your face or just let it cleanse your hands. The water poured onto your hands is fresh just for you. After you've washed your hands, we will give you a towel to dry your hands. And there are little cans here and along the aisles for you to return down the center aisle. By cleansing one another in this way, my friends, we create a web of interdependence and mutual care. I now offer an invocation for this ritual entitled To Be Persons of Vision by Hilary Allen. Gracious spirit of life, keep watch on the innovators, the trailblazers, the takers of risk. Invite us to be persons of integrity and vision. Help us to remember the mystery from which possibility is born. Lead us to honor the sacred spaces where ministries, idealists, and realists meet. Encourage us to imagine more than just what is. Fill our hearts in times of discouragement. Keep our eyes on the long now. And through our efforts, let us know the fruits of connection and a deeper faith.